Well, this is the thing. You've got to have a huge catastrophic event all right, in order to form fossils because you've got to have a huge amount of these sediments, this mud and this sand coming over and covering most of the land. Uh, and you can work that out by when you look at the size of the beds which these fossils are in. So take a classic example that I'm familiar with, the chalk beds. Okay, Now, I come from Norfolk. I live quite close to these lovely uh, chalk cliffs at Hunstanton. They're not the biggest, but they've got some wonderful colours and stuff in there. They're the ones I've studied quite a lot and you can also go all around the UK I mean the UK is famous for chalk the great white cliffs of Dover massive great big stuff in fact in Norfolk if you just dig down you get to chalk it's uh, it's over a thousand foot thick okay so lots of chalk in Britain people know Britain for chalk what a lot of people don't know is that you can find exactly the same chalk over in America you can find it in Canada you can find it in South America you can get on a plane at Heathrow fly to Australia and you can lean out the window and photograph the chalk as you go it goes all through Turkey you see the white chalk chalk through Turkey, all down through Asia, and it even finishes up down in Australia. So it covers a huge area of the landmass. How do we know it's the same chalk? Because it all sits on exactly the same sand, the bed of green sand, all over the world, provably exactly the same formation. So you're talking about a huge, huge area of rock. And then you've got to say, well, this is a huge area of rock. It's covering most of the world. It was formed underwater. How quickly was it formed? Okay, well, the standard uh, sort of average rate of formation for chalk is around one inch per thousand years. Okay, it varies depending on where you are in the, in the world and depending on what date they've given to it, but it roughly is about one inch per thousand years. Okay, well, then if you then look at the fossils that you get out of the chalk, I mean, I found ammonite fossils, you know, the big curly whirly ones? I found ammonite fossils that are about two foot across. Okay, so these are big ammonite fossils. Well, these are big ammonite fossils in a bed of chalk which is supposed to be laying down at the rate of one inch per thousand years, you're never going to get a fossil. It's going to be destroyed before then. So you've got a huge area that needs to be brought in masses of sediment very, very quickly to bury all of the creatures very, very deeply and very quickly in order to create the fossils. You're talking about a huge worldwide flood. Now we do read about a worldwide flood in the book of Genesis. It's a result of God's judgment on mankind. But interestingly enough, there are scientists who have actually recognize this has to be a big flood and in fact one of them that I know about Dr. Ron Neller who's now uh, we're blessed enough to now have him working uh, with creation research he's a world expert in basically looking at the big picture of geology okay looking at the the great big he's, he's what is known as a geomorphologist so he looks at the big picture of geology looks at the big picture of all the big beds and he was uh, doing his research and he said, look at these great big beds that cover most of the world. This has got to be formed in a flood. Now, he came from an atheistic background. Okay, He didn't have uh, you know, a clue about Noah's flood. He didn't have a clue about Christianity at all. Never heard of them. And it wasn't until somebody actually gave him a book, of, you know, the Bible, and said, look, read this chapter. And he's like, that's the flood. It has to be. And he actually, in his own words, he became a Christian by accident in the sense that he was actually doing his research, was trying to follow his research to the conclusion, came to the conclusion that it was a big flood and realized that the only way that you could possibly get this in a big flood is in the flood of Noah and became a Christian, like I said, by accident through that through that process. So it's, it's provably has to be this big, massive flood that covers most of the world and it, it fits perfectly with the flood of Genesis.